Hi, I'm Alex, and in this video, I'm going to talk about converting a game into a virtual reality game and how to make the best VR game possible. In my last video, I talked about how we made our Game Jam game, which came 54th out of 5,477 games. Link up there if you want to check that out. I definitely recommend it. We're making the game during the Game Jam. We were talking about how cool it would be in VR. But given the fact we only had 48 hours to make the game, we didn't really have time to do that. Now though, we have a lot more hours, so we can put more hours into VR development. I love VR. Ever since I borrowed an Oculus Rift CV1 from my university in the first year of my computer science degree, I fell in love with it. I used it in my tiny student accommodation room. I couldn't even play some games because I couldn't physically reach to some virtual objects, but I was instantly sold on the worlds that VR can create. So if I'm making a game, I want to take my passion for VR to make it the best VR game possible. A big part of what I want to focus on in this video is interactions. How do you physically interact with the virtual objects that are in front of you? I think that this is especially important in VR. Some VR games are basically just interacting with objects. And so a lot of my effort is making these interactions as good as possible. Now, I haven't made a VR game in Unreal Engine before. Previously, I was working on an asymmetric co-op VR game, but for that I was using Unity and the Steam VR Unity plugin. The Steam VR Unity plugin offered a lot of functionality that I used when making my game, and so I wanted something similar for Unreal. I looked around for Unreal Engine VR plugins and found the VR expansion plugin, but it seemed to not give me exactly what I wanted. I started development then without a plugin, just using the default Unreal VR capabilities. I used the default Unreal Grab and then piggybacked off of our non-VR logic for interacting with objects. And now we can play our game in VR. It definitely isn't perfect though. The scale is a bit off for VR play. In fact, one of our developers couldn't play it because he couldn't reach up to some of the objects. Another issue is in our interactions. They aren't very interesting. For example, this light switch. To turn it on or off, you just reach out with your hand and pull the trigger. There isn't much interaction there. What I really want is to reach out with my finger and just flick the switch up. No pressing buttons on controllers just using my hands. I can pretend that's how it works by miming these actions. Miming these actions feels really fun, but really shows how much better this will be once it is implemented properly. So how do we make these sorts of interactions work? We want physical hands a la Half-Life Alex or the Lab update, where the hands are physically in the world and so they can push, move and interact with objects. So for a button, you would just push your finger into the button. How to make these physical hands? I was looking into what would be the best way of doing this when a viewer on Twitch I streamed my VR game dev on Twitch, link below. A viewer on Twitch asked what plugin I was using. I said I wasn't using a plugin, as no plugins gave me what I needed. But I thought to myself, maybe I should look at that VR expansion plugin and double check if it doesn't give me what I want. And I was an idiot and it gives me exactly what I want. The website wasn't entirely clear on the features, but their YouTube videos clearly shows that the plugin offers the tools I need to make the game I want. So if it wasn't for that random question of what plugin am I using, I would have wasted countless hours of development replicating something that already exists. This is one of the reasons why I stream. I find that interacting with chat helps me become a better developer, and it's fun to hang out while developing the game. Let's get right into using this plugin. It gives us the physical hands that we want, grabbing, locomotion, and more. As we've got physical hands, we can now play with our ziggies, and it's so much fun! We call our little aliens Ziggies. Over the course of this game's development, I've made many gifts of playing with our Ziggies to try to share the joy of playing with them with more people. To make playing with our Ziggies better, we use physical animations. This is where the animation and the physics are combined together to create how the Ziggy will move. This means you can poke our Ziggies and they will react to the poking. You can also do things like pull apart the Ziggies, although it doesn't quite look right so we'll probably need to fix that later. Next, we want buttons to interact with, where you can reach out with our finger and push it. If the button is bigger, you could punch it or slap it. So how do you do this? The plugin does have an example button, but it doesn't quite have the interaction that I want. My solution to the buttons would be my solution to all other interactions. 
It is composed of three main parts. The first part is a physics constraint. A physics constraint will define how one object can move in relation to another. For example, if you wanted to represent an elbow joint, you would allow a rotation in one axis while locking all other movement and rotation. Now how would we use this for a button? We would want to define a constraint so that the button can be pushed in and out, but not side to side. We would also want to lock all rotation. We can now press the button, but the button stays pressed. So let's move it out using the second part, a force. We use a physics thruster to provide a constant force pushing the button out, meaning that if you press the button in, the button will be then pushed back out so that you can press the button again. The problem now is that we can press the button as many times as we want, but nothing is going to happen. So let's make something happen when you press the button using sensing for logic. We check if the button has been pressed using a collider that can tell if the button top has moved a certain distance. We can then trigger logic if that happens, such as activating this cute alien generator and now we have more ziggies to play with. Using these three parts, we then worked on a toggle switch and more the details of the physics constraint, force and sensing for logic was different, it was the same base concepts that got the interactions working. A big difference in the implementation is that the force has to be more complicated. If the switch is closer to the top, it will have a force to push it to the top. And if it is closer to the bottom, it will have a force to push it to the bottom. This means that it will flip to the top or bottom. This added complexity did lead to some issues initially, but I did get it working eventually. These switches are really fun to play with. We hook them up to control the lights, so you can individually turn on and off all of the lights. And I can just spend so long just playing with these switches. You can choose to flip them all on and off individually, or you can use your whole hand to turn them on or off at the same time. These were also used for our shields. With our shields, the switches are sideways and you can flip them all on and off in one motion or again, you can choose which ones you want to turn on and off. The joy of interacting with these switches is a large part of what we're aiming for in VR. This toggle switch can also be used as a template for many other interactions, such as this door, which can be seen as a switch in terms of interaction, but it just looks different. There were some issues initially with orientation when creating these other interactions, but once it was fixed for one of the interactions, it would work for all of them. The next interaction we want is a linear interaction, similar to a button, but more for grabbing onto and sliding forwards and backwards. This can be a draw or this hatch for the ammo. Similar to the toggle switch, we then have this snap onto two positions. The switch and drawers have two positions that they will snap to, open and close for the draw, and on and off for the switch. But we also want a throttle control. This throttle control will have multiple places for the handle to snap to for multiple speeds. Another interaction is a steering wheel. This can be picked up and rotated within limits. It will then snap back to the neutral position. We probably want this to steer the ship, but we'll have to save that for the next video. So subscribe, as there'll be many more videos about the development of the game coming in the future. I said in my last video, I'll be doing weekly devlogs, but this has been two weeks. I want to try to do weekly videos, but if I can't, I'll do fortnightly videos. So subscribe for that, or even ring that bell. Join our Discord for more updates and details regarding beta testing. I stream my VR game dev on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7.30pm BST. So if you want to discuss this video, the game, or anything else, do come hang out. You can also choose between pressing that thumbs up or thumbs down button. Comment below with how you think the game is shaping out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. What I want is to just reach out with my finger and flick the switch up. No pressing on buttons on controllers and I've messed up my line. Okay, let's try that again. So if you want to discuss this video, the game, or anything else, do come out. Do come hang out. Hang out. Don't come... I mean, do come out, but you know, that's not the point of what I'm trying to say right now.